Example one says that we're gonna use definitions to decide if this is true or false. The first example here, part A, says points R, S, and T are collinear. All right, so what do you think, Mrs. Palermo? R, S, and T. So I am trying to decide if that's true or false. And I'm going to use my definitions to kind of support it. Okay. Exactly. I'm thinking because the, the word that I'm looking at is collinear, I'm probably going to have to know what that means. Um, and collinear means points that are on the same line. And to me, that is the case. So true. Lovely. Okay. Now, this next one says that Ray SU is perpendicular to line RT. Okay, um, the definition I'm probably focusing on is perpendicular, and perpendicular means two lines, two rays, whatever, they form a right angle when they intersect. And I'm looking at that picture, and I'm sure you did this to help me out, but it doesn't look that way, but we also talked about the picture you can't base off what it looks like but since there's not that little box there exactly we can't conclude that they are so false wonderful and one thing guys a lot of times uh, your examples might ask you to explain so when you explain it you can you know just elaborate on those definitions notice my explanation was just the definition and that's all you really need mm -hmm. that's why we have mm -hmm. them Example two says rewrite into a conditional and a converse. So notice what I'm giving you. I'm giving you a biconditional statement. And we're going to take this biconditional statement and we're going to write it's con conditional and it's converse. And the reason why we can do that is if we go back and kind of backtrack here, biconditional statement is made up of what statements? A conditional statement and it's converse. So that means we can do that. Now remember, Thinking about this, the conditional statement is kind of like, from a biconditional, it's kind of the interpret forward. the forward, okay. and then the converse is the backwards. All right. And I know that with biconditionals, it's got that if and only if. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, yeah, and Ms. Palermo is underlining those, and I think that's really important. As you take a look, just take those words out, and we need to throw the if and the then. So the conditional should be, if a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. Excellent job. Okay, so it's just taking out the if and only if and putting the yeah. then there and start with it. So if. it's kind of like me just doing that and then putting if and then. Okay, and then the converse, I know I just want to flip the order, so I'm going to start with um, if it. Oh, I can't start with if it. If a ray divides, ooh, it, I got another it. If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it bisects the angle. You're exactly right. Okay. Yeah, you have those it, it, and you're like, which one's what? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you can even do that from the biconditional statement. You can kind of look up here and kind of see where that comes from as well. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Our next example says that x squared equals 49 if and only if. Ooh, what does that mean? If and only if means a biconditional. Okay, so we have a biconditional statement. So x squared is 49 if and only if x equals 7. So the question is, is the statement true? Now, remember that if a biconditional statement is true, that means the, st the conditional statement and its converse are both true. So what would the conditional statement be here? All right, so um, it would be if x squared equals 49, then x equals 7. Seven. And then what would the converse of this be? If x equals 7, then x squared equals 49. Okay, so just getting an idea of what those look like. Now, let's take a look at this first one. If x squared equals 49, so we know that's true. Okay. Again, we always want to start with the hypothesis here. We know that that part is true. We're looking to see, can I ever have a different outcome? Could I ever have a different conclusion? So if x squared equals 49, then is x equals 7 the only option that we have there? Well, I know that if I put 7 in for the x and squared, I do get 49. So that is true. However, I can think of another number value for x that works. Oh, so what if else I can, do you know? So if I can think of another value, 
then X doesn't have to be 7. Okay, and that's what that statement's saying. So sure. I know that X could equal negative 7. If I square that, then that also equals 49. So, so X could be also So that seven. conditional statement is actually false because X could equal negative 7. Exactly. So we would have the same hypothesis, but with a different conclusion. X could be negative 7. That's what makes it false. So looking down at the converse, if x is 7, so we're, we know that that's true, then x squared will equal 49. What do you okay. think about that one? Could well, I ever come up with a different outcome? I just am thinking of something. What if, if we're, our question saying is the biconditional true? You had mentioned that if the biconditional, the only way it's true is if both conditional and converse are true, right? Correct. So what so if we the know it's false? What if the conditional is already false? Do I really need to look at the converse? I really don't. No. Okay. I so really don't. I'm just I'm just trying to think like, you know, sure. if if I don't need to go any further, I've answered the question, right? You're right. We really don't. <laughs> but yeah. Looking at this one, this is a true statement, but yeah. of course the first one's false. So we that just brings up a good point. So if let's say you look at the conditional first, what if the conditional is true? Does that automatically mean the biconditional is true? Nope, it's got to have both true. So anytime, kind of like we talked about with counterexamples, mm -hmm. you just need one false thing to say mm -hmm. that it's not true. So once Same you once you see something's false, then you've answered the question exactly. Example 4 says, determine whether the statement can be combined with its converse to form a true biconditional. All right, so let's just make sure we're good with what they're asking you to do. They're giving you a statement, and what kind of statement are we going to... It's a this conditional is, this statement. This is the conditional. So what we have to do is it says we need to first decide what the converse is. Okay. And then if they are telling you if this converse ends up being true, then we can write a true biconditional statement. Okay. So I kind of get the, I've gotten the steps here for us. Okay. Let's first, but however, let's first read the conditional, because what if the conditional is false to begin with? Then we with? know that it definitely could There's not be a true There's nothing more to do. Okay, so let's look at the conditional first. If two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. This should sound familiar. We've oh, done yeah. Like this. That's right. We've talked about this. So what and do that, you think? That's definitely true. This one's already true. So... That doesn't automatically mean the converse is true. We've seen conditional statements that are true and converse but or false. Right. So let's look at the converse. How okay. would, would you write uh, read so that? We need to flip flop. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I don't want to say if they are congruent, if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. So let me put that in there. If two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. Perfect. Now well, let's decide the truth value of that. So um, what do you think? If two angles are congruent, yeah, that means that they have the same measure. In fact, isn't that the definition? It pretty much is. So basically, if you think about it, what we're doing is we're going to write now the biconditional, which in a sense is writing a definition. Okay. But we're going to make sure we have what phrase in there. The if and only if. All right. So it says if the conditional and the converse statements are both true, let's write the biconditional. Okay. So I want to take out the if and the then. And, so and I would suggest what I like to do is I like to start, go back to the conditional. Oh, good to know. Okay. That's and, true, because we said that's really the forward part. Yeah, so let's read, let's go back to the conditional. You said let's get rid of the if and then. Okay. I'm just going to do that. Yeah, and then we want to throw in the if and only if. Where are we doing that, right here? Where the then is. Where the then is. So that would basically mean, well, what would it sound like? Two angles have the same measure if and only if they are congruent. Awesome. And you nailed it. Nice work. Okay. Now, the next part of this says, we've got a new example. It says, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Okay, so the same directions. We're, same directions. We're, let's first look at the conditional, right? Right. So and what do you think? Do you think that this is a true or a false conditional statement? All right, if two angles form a linear pair, so we have a linear pair to begin with, mm -hmm. and I know a linear pair are adjacent angles that basically form a straight line. Right. So, yes, they're going to be supplementary because they have to add up to 180. So, in this statement right here, notice you have to know the linear pair definition and you have to know what supplementary means. Again, that vocab, huge. Mm -hmm. All right, so since that's true, we still got to look at the converse. So, converse, right. let me flip-flop. If two angles are supplementary, then they form a linear pair. Lovely. Okay, now let's talk about this. Is this true or false? 
All right. If two angles are supplementary, and all I know, supplementary means angles that add up to 180. Two angles add up to 180. Correct. Will they always be, be a, a linear, linear pair? pair? You know? No, because I could have an angle that's, let's say, 80 degrees. And an angle that's not adjacent to it, that's 100. Again, non adjacent meaning they're not going to share. Those are supplementary, but they're not a linear pair. So mm -hmm. that converse is actually false. Right. And this is one that most people forget about the fact that you can have supplementary angles that are not adjacent. So don't forget that fact, guys. It's important. When you're looking at supplementary, that just means they add to equal 180. It does not mean that they're going to be adjacent angles. They don't state that. Okay. So if we know that. One statement is true, but another one's false. Can I write a true by conditional statement then? Nope. No. So we're so we can kind of ignore this part. It says if the conditional and the converse statements are both true, then write the by conditional. So they're not both true. So we're we're done. done. Perfect. Example five it says rewrite the true statement in if then form. So we did this in section one. So they're already telling you the if then statement is true or the, the statement is true, we're gonna write it in if then, which means conditional, and write the converse. Then, if the converse is true, write a biconditional statement. If the converse is false, provide a counterexample. So a lot going on in this example. Okay. So let's just do one step at a time, and, and that's our, our advice to you guys. Don't try to like rush through it. Just make sure you check off the list. So what's the first thing we need to do? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is write the conditional statement. Write it in if-then form, which is the conditional statement. Now, when you read this sentence, what do you notice about this? Okay, let's see. Um, ooh, I see an if in there. Yeah, and we knew from when we did it, when we the, first started. The first section. There's an if, you got to start with that. Okay, so help so, me out. Okay, so it says if they have the same radii. So if two circles have the same radii, same radii then they have the same area. You're exactly right. All right. Now, they're telling us that this is already a true statement. They're saying this is already true. Which would make sense because we know it's pi r squared. And yeah. If they have the same if radius. If they have the then. same radius, you substitute that in, they're going to have the same area. Right. Now, the next step, what are we going to do next? Okay, now I need to flip them. Because we're writing, we're writing the, converse. the converse. So, if, now I can, <laughs> I can go back to switch my, my they's again. So, if two circles have the same area, then they have the same radius or radii. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then right, now, now, is that the, true? The, the, if they have the same area, will they have to have the same radius? Well, yeah, because area is still pi r squared, and that r, if they have the same area, then yeah, that r is going to have to be the same. You're exactly right. So we already knew the conditional. They said the conditional is true. They said if the converse is true or if the converse is false. So we do need to determine that truth value like Mrs. Hograve is doing. So this is also true, and we already knew this was given true. What does that mean we can do? So now we can write the biconditional. We can write the biconditional. And again, if let's say the converse was false, it says provide a counterexample, and that's okay. pretty common. Yeah. This one, we're just not doing that. Now, remember how we write a biconditional? Where do we look? Okay, we want to start with a conditional statement because that's our forward. So this is where we're going. And we're going to take out the if and then, and we're going to put in the words if and only if. And okay. where are we going to put that? Where the then is. So read it to me. Two circles have the same radii if and only if they have the same area. Yay!